Running around all the time in your mind, but you're not free. I see you want to be grounded, grounded like me. He is the vine, and we are the branches. Understand that this is all about authority. You can be free, you can overcome. You can overcome. Up in heaven, angels dance cause they're free. Happy seen for eternity. Without God and His Son Jesus, everything is peaceful and kindness. Happy always doing His will. Happy always doing His will. We are here. And I have to tell you, your outfit is so cute. I know, when we say let's like blend, I mean, <laughs> honestly, Candace. I don't know where I found this. It was in a purse in your office. <laughs> and I found it and I was like, that just goes so good. So, well, yeah. I think we look quite, quite good yeah, in it. Yes. Don't you? So <laughs> it worked. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have had, we've just come off, I mean, honestly, what God is doing. If anybody doesn't think that God is, is not alive, they think, hey, he's too silent, he's not out there. He is alive and he is well. And we are unified and people have come from all over the world and we have just all been incredibly encouraged. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Holy Spirit Moving never nearer It makes us look inward It clears up our sight In a sweet reflex Happy Passover With introspection God was slowing down Find forgiveness and make it own we serve God This place is filled with holy lights And we bow down And praise you for your wonder and might And we serve Jesus Christ For his holy sacrifice And we will imitate is the night of Passover. The children of God all left out of Egypt. The light of the full moon. These things were a shadow of what's to come. We are still living out in Exodus and we left half-hearted Christianity for whole-hearted Christianity, remembering what Jesus did. given to those who love him is alive and he fulfills his mighty promise to rescue man from slavery freedom like we have never known before through Jesus Christ Lord.
door that's asking us to follow exactly what he did and what did he do? He focused on the work of God and he lived right. You've been set free. Now follow your Christ and live it. Amen. And give you a life. Thank you, God. Thank you, thank you. Brings back a lot of memories. Beautiful. Unforgettable weekend. Well, Yes, thank you, God. And we're still going. We are still going. So the emotions are deep and high, and you can't make that up. And so uh, those, the, the thunderous clapping is for our Holy Father, who's doing a mighty work. And he continues on as this celebration of Passover continues. And um, we have had a beautiful weekend of international here. And so uh, I wanted Chris Ancona, who is uh, over the, the Shepherd over International, to come on up and join Candace and I. Thank you. Thank you for all you do. So um, we've had a beautiful weekend. And so um, we, are, we have three uh, separate countries that are going to be represented here tonight and i'm not sure how many though were represented mm -hmm. uh, this weekend do you know the number we had 17 international visitors from um, south I, africa uk australia, australia um three Canada. central africa uh, uh, yeah. Can Canada. Canada. So okay. at least four okay well, we, we had, um, uh, it's wonderful what God's doing, but uh, we're going to represent three tonight, and tonight, please join Candace and Chris and Con and I in welcoming a couple from South Africa, John and Suzanne Van Zyl. You can be free, you can Um, this flag represents um, it's the flag of South Africa. The flag of South Africa. It was a very beautiful flag. I honestly did not know that that was its... Uh, hold it up one more time so we can see this. That's awesome. Yay. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And so uh, you, I want you all to tell your story, but before, before and make, making sure that they're not too shy, I wanted to make sure that you know that that they're both veterinarians from South Africa and handle big game. And so here, who, what are you holding there? Can you like slow them down just a little bit? There's a zebra, I know that much. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, oh, that's a giraffe. A giraffe. A it's a baby giraffe, maybe? Oh, that's beautiful. And what is that? That's a leopard cup. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. what is that? That's a crocodile, African Nile crocodile. Crocodile, that is amazing. And those are some rhinos, rhinos behind my daughter, Rachel. Oh, oh, wow. Okay, you all should know that one. That's an African elephant. elephant. How magnificent. <laughs> okay. That's a magnificent animal. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, that's a, quite an exciting life you all have in South Africa. And so tell me, um, you know, t t tell us your story. How, what, what, how, did, how did you all find the remnant and way down? It started back in um, 2007. I had a lot of food allergies and um, God healed me of that. And I knew I had to eat everything, but how do you eat everything and stay healthy? Uh, and then a friend, a dear friend, told me about Way Down. She listened to some tapes with friends way back at the end of the 90s, I think. And I looked it up on the internet and found that it's still going and alive. And I ordered my first Way Down at Home box set with videos and, and tapes. 
And then in January of 2008, I did the first online Exodus out of Egypt class with Whitney and it changed my life and my family's life completely forever. Um, I think from a perspective of learning to eat between the boundary of hunger and fullness is one thing, but then just to learn that we need to lay down idols and love God with everything, everything that we do. So that just applies to everything in your life, not just the food. And the message went far beyond just the, the eating way of life. Oh, that's very beautiful. Y'all lost weight, I, I would think. Yes, yes, we did lost weight. Um, that was also How the much amazing did thing. Lose? I lost eight pounds. And 20 pounds over here. Wow. <laughs> And um, I think, yeah, just putting it into practice, living it, but then throughout everything in your life where you yes. just live in that love relationship with God. And it's so, it's so straightforward, actually. It's not, you don't need to understand many things. It's just get down to love God with everything. That's beautiful. And your children are beautiful. And so, John, uh, what do you have to add to this story? In 2011, um, we had the opportunity to buy a farm. I used to practice in a very large uh, area in our, in our country, in a, one of the major cities. But it was always a desire of my heart to um, uh, have our own property and our own farm. So uh, we got the opportunity, and then after we've moved to that, we were no longer uh, spiritually taken care of. You know, we we're very far away from the nearest town, and. Um, so, it's, although the property, as you can see on the photos, is really beautiful where we actually live, um, but spiritually it's a desert. And uh, we try different things in terms of spiritual care. You know, we try TV series and video and cassette material, but it, 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 it wasn't the right thing. And then Susan suggested that we should try the way down uh, teaching and uh, courses. And after the very first sermon that we've had the opportunity to observe and uh, watch through the webcast, our whole family just decided to go all in and that that's the right thing to, to do for our family. And just about immediately after the first sermon, we've already had um, um, fruit in terms of better unity amongst us, the, the obedience of our children, the peace and harmony in our house uh, just was so much more. Oh, that, that is beautiful. So that, that, and that, <laughs> so uh, the contrast, the change, and, uh, you know, like you say, the peace and the unity in the house. You wouldn't want to go back. Not, not never. <laughs> yeah, I think um, following the sermons weekly and being part of Remnant Fellowship outside of just the Way Down ministry also made a big difference in the sense that we really felt shepherded for being so far away, but knowing that we were held high in prayers and support and people that love us and reach out to us. And that is just beautiful. So the fellowship, even though we're, how many hours did it take you to get here? Uh, 44 hours. <laughs> 44 hours, yes. I mean, 44 hours, you know, flying at whatever, 500 miles an hour or more. Uh, and the know. WhatsApp is in a second. And it's just amazing what technology does. And that you can feel so connected even though you are that far. So you're near here, uh, Johannesburg would be... Um, we are there with that South Africa word. The red oh, balloon, the red that's balloon. just right where we are. You know, that oh, red, yeah. the dot there, that button there. Okay. And you, you all are, uh, you're teaching a way down class there. Tell us about that. Yes. Well, we are doing the Exodus out of Egypt class. Um, I sort of built relationship with ladies in the town where the kids go to school. And we started a way down Exodus out of Egypt class in January and went very well. It's amazing how receptive the ladies are and Adorable. coming from diet and exercise, you can't explain freedom that there is in the message because you think having a thin body is freedom, but then when you learn that these things are idols, you know, going to the gym and being a slave in the gym keeps you in bondage and to learn that you can be free of that and just love God and focus on Him and get better results, 
is just beautiful and seeing the results with these ladies and how they are being set free is just beautiful. Well, give them my love and it would be beautiful one day to be able to um, come there and talk. And isn't Johannesburg the nearest large city? Yes, that is so. So um, that would be exciting. And uh, so it's beautiful. What's it like uh, taking care of elephants and all that? Tell us a little bit. Well, every day I fly a lot and we work together with helicopter pilots, but there's not a single time that we go up and just not being thankful for the most awesome job in the whole wide world. And we honor God for that. You know, my, the friend that I fly with is also a brother in Christ. And uh, it's just so awesome to observe nature in such a manner and just know that God created all of that, the beauty, the mountains, the rivers, the animals. And uh, I feel honored to be a servant of God and can bring honor and joy to God for looking after his uh, animals. How many do you have there? On the farm, I really don't know how many we've got. You know, that's just a whole bunch of animals. Species, maybe? Um, on the farm, about 12, I would say, a rough wow. guess. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's beautiful. So, well, it's amazing. And we're just honored. Wasn't this fun to have the Van Ziles here? Our next couple is from London, England, and it is, um, we've got Mark and Anna Saunderson, and Mark's lost 90 pounds, and Anna's lost 42 pounds, so please join us in welcoming. Please. Okay, this is lots of fun. So did y'all, tell us about this weekend. Did y'all enjoy this? I enjoy it. It was absolutely amazing. Um, I just want to say a really, really big thank you to you all for the love and the, and the care and the friendship that you've shown to our family, um, for the hospitality and the welcome. Um, I was coming from the airport. I was, I was delayed because I was getting a car. Um, to come down, but um, the McDonald family came and met us and took the children down. And I saw later on, um, on my phone, on the WhatsApp message, just the, I think you call it the tunnel of love, um, <laughs> that the children came into and Anna, and um, I was bowled over by that. So that was amazing to see. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, we feel so honored and privileged to be a part of, of this wonderful family, this community of love, this kingdom of love here. Thank we are you. so excited y'all are here. We, we love you guys so much. Everybody does. So, okay, tell us, how, how did you all find us? Okay, well, I'm one of these who has come through my wife, so I'll let her take over. So, Anna, why don't you tell the story so far? Okay, so um, my history is that uh, my first diet, I think I started at the age of 16 and um, carried on trying every diet, known to man, got involved with gyms, exercise, etc., and found myself um, steadily putting on weight over the years. Um, Twelve years ago, someone handed me, a friend handed me the Way Down Diet book, um, loved it, put the principles into practice of eating within hunger and fullness, but I didn't, and, and lost weight on it. But I never transferred my focus up to God so I was still very focused on me, how I looked, how clothes fit, etc. So um, over the next few years, I put all of that weight back on and some. Um, and really things spiraled from there. Um, our marriage became increasingly difficult. I was a not very nice wife, really poor language, um, throwing things, um, didn't know how to parent either. So I was really quite a chaotic mother. Um, two years ago, I just felt I'd personally hit a real crisis point with all of this. And I was, you know, a good 42 pounds heavier than you see me now. Um, and the way down book had always, it always stayed at the back of my mind. Like I knew it was the truth. 
Um, but I'd kidded myself thinking, oh, I, you know, I work in London, it's, I can't do that, it's, I'm not, you know, I'm too busy. But I called the number on the back of the book, got through to Jenny Mendel, um, amazing, had a wonderful conversation with her. And she told me that there were two saints uh, living in London. I thought, oh, saints, that sounds interesting. What's a saint? Yeah, what's a saint? <laughs> what is a saint? <laughs> Wings? I don't know. Um, <laughs> Beth and Chris and Kona. Um, Did you think it was probably some kind of clergy in a big hat that's like, and, you know. And then they saw me. And then it yeah. turned out to be Chris and Beth. <laughs> <laughs> But when I did first meet Beth, she may as well have had wings actually on her because it oh, did feel absolutely. like meeting an angel. So I sent her an email, met her within a week and my life completely changed. So she talked me through the principles of hunger and fullness, showed me how to you know, cut my food in half, eat slowly, push my plate away, cover it with a serviette. Um, and the weight dropped off pretty quickly um, that was wonderful, but in addition to that, uh, she started talking to me about, you know, being under authority, and that was a huge thing for me, um, predominantly at home, because I was completely outside of Mark's control, um, just doing my own thing, thinking I knew better, but she told me about, you know, how to you know, be quiet, listen to my authority, um, let him lead, um, and that also spilt through into work as well, so that transformed my experience of being in the workplace. Um, I had initially thought, you know, I'm, I'm the brightest person in this office, why aren't people listening to me? Um, and was finding myself in a lot of difficult situations. That completely turned around, um, and we've been so blessed as a family, hugely blessed. So huge thanks to all the encouragement, all the texts, the WhatsApp groups, the letters, uh, that people have sent me, sent the children, sent Mark. It's a phenomenal amount of support and keeps us encouraged every day. Oh, and, and your children, I had two of them spent the night with me last night. I can vouch that these, we, we were able to talk about God, their relationship with God. They were talking about, um, I asked them, what is the difference? And they said that there's no, nothing like this over there. And of course we hear that here too, but that she's talking about no backbiting and the, ch the, the, the friends, how close they are with everyone here. And um, it, they're, they're just ultimately so polite and so beautiful and intelligent. And so just truly, truly a blessed family. Beautiful. And then, okay, so what's going on in London, Chris? Tell us about. I was just gonna add to that. So I remember Karina, their eldest daughter, when she came and met the children here, she's like, I found my people, you know, just a genuine love amongst the children, obviously the adults, but um, it was an honor to, to get to uh, be able to travel overseas. God is, we've been a part of this truth for um, way down for over 16 years now. And uh, we, we were also remote when we first found this and just learned how to apply the principles even though we were out of town, we didn't have a community or fellowship, but we knew that we weren't getting answers anywhere else. And so God has just always put it through work where we've had the ability to travel and we traveled all over the US meeting, I think over uh, 40 or 50 different way down homes and, and, and remnant homes. And then God allowed us to move to London for a season. And I, I, don't, uh, I wouldn't have done that without living here 11 years uh, straight to really uh, build that foundation in my own heart. But to be able to be out there um, hosting classes, opening our home, having, having uh, uh, we had Flo and Femi, he'll be up next from Africa, come visit us. Obviously the Saundersons, many others, uh, Beth would uh, host Way Down uh, for ladies during the day. And uh, just, it was just a beautiful experience because what I love about um, what you guys have all said is that you had an experience with Way Down in the past. And those books are out there all over the world. Your, your truth, this ministry was all over the world. And it's the one thing people go back to and, and realize this is what worked. This is the only thing that worked. And then to see people pick it up and uh, just, it was a delight to always get the updates from Anna because she did start with, uh, with the London group first. And um, just every week, weight loss, consistently, never looking back, always pushing forward. Um, and just so eager to learn and the humility, and you know that you're one spirit 
with a true, a true called out saint. Uh, you know what that means now, that it's just a heart devoted to God. It's, it's um, no idols. And, and so we've loved that opportunity. And now to be back here and see them all visit, and I, I guess the last thing I'll say is just, I love that their hearts are set on pilgrimage. Like I, that was, you know, even when we were out of town, we always uh, came here for the festivals. Even when we lived in London, we never missed an event because we know it was so such an encouragement to be here. And uh, I'm so happy that they are now traveling here uh, to where it all started. So, awesome. So, so how many people are worshiping at your home now? Um, well, there's a family of five, and there's, uh, there's another lady in, in London as well. And from time to time, we also pull together a Europe. So we have uh, Fernanda in Portugal, who some of you will have met when she's come and visited. And bride in in Ireland yes um, so it's beautiful yeah. I mean just to just to find anyone I know that's wanting and I know there's more out there that's why we're excited about maybe uh, a trip in the future where you know we can rally up who whomever God wants to rally up and so it, the, the time is right the fields are right and there are a lot of hurting people out there so yeah, we should do a plug. But from, from May onwards, there are direct flights from Nashville to London. Is that <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Eight hours and five minutes. That's nothing. <laughs> That's beautiful. Let's do it. Look at that. 4,000 miles. There it is. That's what... yeah. I mean, to say it took us about, was it 14 or 16 hours to come? But from, from May, that's going to be off that so wow so take advantage of it there's what? a there's a welcome for any of you in london anytime just give us a give us a call you're gonna be busy this summer <laughs> <laughs> that is beautiful that is beautiful well we're going to continue on on our our uh journey and now we're going to drop back down into africa in uh lagos nigeria we have Femi and Flo Wright. Femi lost 40 pounds and Flo lost a about 50 pounds. Let's go. It's so exciting. Oh my goodness. What a weekend. What a weekend. I tell you, what a week. And so this is truly, truly a treat for us to have you all here. So uh, tell us about, tell us about Nigeria and maybe uh, in, in your story. Demi. Okay. Um, first of all, I'd like to say a big thank you to you, Ms. Gwen, um, and to everybody here. Um, Mr. Ancona has been awesome. Uh, it's been a wonderful experience that we've had here. Uh, my family and I are very grateful. So Nigeria um, is, in the, is in West Africa. So if you look at um, the map of Africa, it looks like a gun or a pistol. Um, and Nigeria is like the trigger um, in that map. So um, Lagos State is, uh, size-wise, actually the smallest state in Nigeria. However, it's also the most popular state. It has 20 million people living in Lagos State. Uh, and that's because 70% of Nigeria's economy or commerce goes through or passes through Lagos State. Wow. Because we've got, uh, Lagos State is bordered by the Atlantic Ocean. So we've got uh, two major uh, seaports and we've also got two uh, airports. And it's like the gateway to the rest of the nation. So a lot of uh, large international companies, a lot of oil companies from the US actually uh, have their African headquarters in Nigeria. Wow, wow, what an education. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that education, I love it. And, um, and also, in addition, you all have a, a business that y'all, I know at one point when I saw you when I went to London, you know, part, you, you have an apartment in London but that y'all have done business back and forth there? Um, yeah, we used to live in the UK for about, he lived there for about 10 years, I was there for about five years. 
So we still travel back and forth quite often because we still have ties there. And sometimes work also takes me to London. So I've had the opportunity to fellowship with the saints and it's been awesome. That's beautiful. Okay, so how did you find um, in Nigeria? Well, in London, I guess you, maybe you found it in London, but tell us your story. Actually, my story is quite unique. Well, it's not unique, but um, so in 2000, I was studying in London. I was in university in London. And then I came home for a holiday. And somebody, um, if a, a good family friend of ours was doing way down. She had lost a lot of weight. And my mom said, you need to do what she's doing. It's some Christian thing. I was like, really? Oh, and wow. This was in Nigeria. This was in Nigeria. Okay. So I went to a class and it was the original Exodus out of Egypt. And I heard you talking and I was like, thank God I don't have to eat breakfast. I don't have to eat three times a day. I don't have to, you know, all the diets were just so confusing and I never lost any weight. So I did it, lost some weight, and then I kind of fell to the side. Uh, fast forward 10 years later in 2000 and, well, 2013, after having my children and getting married, um, I put on a lot of weight, but I kept hearing, go back to the basics. I kept hearing, go back to the basics. And I thought to myself, that sounds like way down. So I Googled it, found the website, found the Facebook page, and reconnected. And I lost about 45 pounds. Wow. But this time, I didn't say anything to him. I just, so we'd eat the same food, we'd sit down, and he was watching me lose weight. So every time I weigh myself, I'd do it in front of him. I'm like, yay, one pound down. And he'd be like, oh, we're eating the same food. Um, so anyway, yeah, so I started, um, I lost weight, and then I felt an emptiness in my heart. I mean, we were going to church. I'd, we'd both been in our church for a while. We were both in ministry. Um, but I was a very angry mother. And I was a very rude wife, very sarcastic to him. Um, God has blessed me with four beautiful children. No I kidding. mean, they are the best. But I was like so frustrated. I didn't know what to do. But I felt in my heart that this wasn't right. But nobody, there were no answers. There was no how to, mm -hmm. which was the difference. So when I started watching You Can Overcome shows, I did all the classes, and I started taking responsibility that it was me that needed to change. Mm -hmm. And I just kept putting that into practice. And it started to bear fruit, and I couldn't deny the truth of this message. I want to hear Femi's side. It's very entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that 2013, when she um, reconnected, uh, at that time, um, I had started riding a bicycle to lose weight. And I just kept riding and riding and gaining weight. And <laughs> she wasn't riding and she was losing weight. And I was wondering what exactly was going on. Um, but she, what was most amazing? <laughs> yes. And, and that was probably when I was still slim. <laughs> You know, and that picture was probably one of the slimmest. <laughs> <laughs> the slimmer ones. <laughs> yeah, the before one. So what was amazing was she was just doing it. Um, I was just watching her. I, I, I could just see the fruit in her. Um, she didn't need to ram it down my throat. She just lived it out. That's it. And as, as if God wanted to also prove a point to me, because when I picked picked up way down in 2014 and um and i lost um about 40 pounds uh as if god wanted to prove a point to me i i got into um an accident i had an accident so a car hit me from behind whilst i was riding and um i broke the t9 vertebrae in my spine Ooh. which meant i was um i was out of active uh, anything act activity for about 16 months because I needed to be stable. Um, but this was a very, it was almost like an epiphany for me because it was an awesome moment because Flo was always playing the messages, your messages. They were going right through my spirit. I, I kept eating between fullness and hunger. I, I, you know, I just kept doing what I needed to do. And that period was a period in which I believed um, I got closer 
to God. Uh, and it was in that period that we actually came to London because I had to come to London for treatment. And that was when you uh, came to Europe and um, we met the Anconas, you know, and everybody else, Janice, Shola, everybody else in London. Um, and it was such an amazing uh, point to prove to me by God because um, I did not put on weight even when I became active. What was actually amazing was a lot of people in our cycling community, for some reason, thought um, it was all the cycling I did 18 months ago that still m helped me maintain my weight. I thought, how could that be? Um, it was just, it's been God. And then afterwards, um, I felt well, because she had started uh, telling me about Remnant Fellowship. Um, and we were involved in our local church. And I just didn't think um, we needed to, you know, worship, but you know, in, in, with with a church that was over eight thousand miles away or there thereabouts. Um, but the messages that we heard were just undeniable. Mm. It was the truth of God. Um, one could not deny the fact that it was just the truth. And what was amazing was everything came out of the Bible. Mm. Um, this last Passover Sunday, I was telling Flo that I know quite a number of preachers that will have preached their own messages. They will have taken one or two verses from the Bible, but preached their own intellectual messages. And everything that you shared on, on Sunday came out of the Bible. And what was so amazing for me is that I used to think I knew now it's so exciting to know that I don't know anything and I've got a lot to learn. It's fun. It's fun. I've got so much to learn. Um, and I'm really, really pray grateful to God for that. Who am I? Who is my family? Who is my lovely wife and my children? That God will bestow this blessing upon this opportunity to know more about him and to live a life for him. So we're, we're very grateful. He plucked you up. It was beautiful. We love you so goodness what a story what a story and uh, you worship there you, there's uh, someone else there in Nigeria or close maybe yeah there's another family uh, Felicia Odumosu and her children uh, Nifemi and Fikore when they can they come and worship with us and it's beautiful I mean we're small but it's, it's a start yes and in the days to come you know Jacob will take root and the fruit will fill the nations I mean God is is um, doing his work in his own timing and getting everyone established and then connecting and uh, with the internet and with travel, now a direct flight uh, to London and, and all this. I mean, this is amazing, amazing education for all of us and it opens up all kinds of doors. I mean, Chris, you've gotten to travel the most as really uh, a, a missionary for this church and uh, what, what are you seeing going on? I mean, one thing is just the unity. So I feel like God has shrunk down the world because of our experience of being able to see and go and watch people immediately pick this up. They're unified, they love it. I was, one of the things that was just going through my mind, like who picks up a diet that you, that you enjoy? Like usually it's, it, it's, you're tired of it within the first day. And anyone that picks up Way Down loves it. They love what you're saying, they love the, clarity, they love um, the simplicity, but, but they also love that it starts to change everything about their life. And so you, you get to meet people that have had that experience and that want to continue and want to uh, want to be around people that that are like-minded. And so what is... It, and again, we're all yes. just, we, we go back down to ground level, ground zero, and we're learning. Yes. We're, it's coming from the heavens and we're learning how what, what the heavens want, Absolutely. what wanted all along what we didn't know, we didn't know. And then unity, I mean, think about the dancers this weekend. Femi, <laughs> I mean, oh my word, he's like, MC Hammer, I mean, I, I, there we go, we got some footage up here. You're bigger than life up here, Femi, as all awesome. time. <laughs> I'm telling you, <laughs> but I mean, 
it's it, just getting to uh, all of us enjoying God. I mean, one thing you can say when you come here is, uh, well, so I, in fact, one of you all, we were, I've talked to so many people, but that it was their first time here and it was beyond what they thought, you know, that uh, the, uh, the genuineness of everybody being in love with God and being so just reaching out to each, I mean, they've never seen anything like it. It's like, it's as thick as carpet because everybody and all the children and, and, and the children cannot wait. Church would be the equivalent growing up when we'd get excited to go to, I mean, what would it be like some, you know, UT football game or something with 100,000 people there? Or I can't even, I, I can't even tell you, but when the children, they, they get up and, um, Abigail McDonald's telling me that uh, Ellie, she's this high, and she's like, she got up the next morning and she went and she found some clothes and stuff and, you know, dressed herself like she, as best as she could, and goes, Church mom, church mom. I mean, they can't wait to get back here. It's better than Disney World, it's better than anything that they've, they've ever been to. And so, and they, they can't wait to get back. So, um, you know, the, the only thing that's going on, I mean, I'm busting out windows and making doors and so that we can like have <laughs> but there it's too small it's the only problem we've got here mm -hmm. that's all <laughs> So I interrupted you, but keep going your vision or what do you know I, I mean I just love to hear like what the difference was um, in coming and seeing because you guys started all this on a journey you know far away but then to come and see what what has that meant to you like I mean I just feel like everyone at some point needs to get here whether you're mm -hmm. whether you're in Africa or all over the world um, mm -hmm. to, what, what what did you see here that you couldn't see through through uh, webcasting so if I can start um, so for for me I just had to come here because um, Whilst we're in Nigeria, um, we had received so much love. I, in particular, received so much love. Um, when I got involved in the accident, Flo had sent a message out to other saints, and people were praying, and I, I was receiving messages. I received WhatsApp message from Terence Cohen almost on a daily basis. I received from so many saints asking me, what do you want, what do you want, and what can I do for you, and so on, you know. Um, so many people just sent messages of love. So I needed to come here for myself to see if this, if this love is genuine, if it's real. Something that hit me was everybody just loves God. <clears throat> So that genuineness for God, for the love of God, is just, and the, the spirit is consistent. So we visited several homes. Um, you know, the Blairs where we live in, they are awesome, awesome. And we visited the Bakers, we visited the Davises, we visited the Sims, we visited the Cohens, you know. Um, so many people that we visited and the spirit has been consistent. Mm. The love of God is just consistent and we are charged to go back um, and continue. And the most important thing is for us to stay connected. Mm. The yes. plan is to stay connected and not get detached in any way. Uh, and as the Lord lays it in our hearts, we will share the message and to the glory of God, I'm sure we will, by this time next year, to the glory of God, I'm sure we'll be more than the normal, the people we have worshiping with Remnant. Oh my goodness, beautifully said, thank you. Oh, so, yes. Just to follow on from that as well, because um, in the story that Anna was saying before, she came into the message first and um, joined up the children and that first of all I thought mm -hmm, yeah okay you're joining and you're joining the children um, do I get a say in this and then they're thinking well actually you know secretly whilst Anna had been um, meeting up with Beth 
because I had been the beneficiary of the most magnificent change in Anna. Not only had she lost weight, but um, it was like I had my wife back. Um, and more than my wife, because I had a wife who genuinely loved God. I had a wife who was genuinely putting God first in all things and who was actually listening to me and wanting to know what I thought about situations. And that was a complete contrast from the, the sort of like 18 months leading up to that momentous, magnificent meeting with Beth, um, which you know, was a turning point. And so I, I was listening into some of the tapes and um, again, the same sort of stories where probably you know, Anna would put a, a tape on at night and we'd be listening to it and I would sort of be pretending to be asleep, but I couldn't sleep because I was hearing truth. And I was thinking, I agree with this. I agree with this. This, this, is, this makes perfect sense. This is simple. This is, this is exactly what it should be. Um, and, but I, you know, I thought, well, let's just hold on to that and see. And I, I, I desperately wanted to come and meet people because, again, part of me wants to check it out. Um, and so when, when we got the opportunity to come for Pentecost last year, Anna and, and, Anna and I, I said, let's go. Uh, I said, I want to meet these people. Um, and and I, somewhere in the back of my mind, I thought, actually, I, this is something that God is in. I want our children to be involved in this fully. So, um, so that's why we elected to bring Karina, because I thought she's our eldest. I didn't want to overwhelm everybody with that in one go, so we brought Karina along. And that's when Karina came and she met with the children here and just said, I've found my people. Oh. And that was just so amazing to hear and see the change in her because again, things had been tough at school, she hadn't felt involved. And she was totally transformed by that. And, and, and going back to school afterwards, total, total transformation and just getting, getting involved, doing her very best, um, listening to the, her teachers as authorities and and was getting blessed in her studies because of that. Um, and I, just to say that whole thing of authority and getting things right invites the blessing of God into your life. And so when, at, at the end of that Pentecost time, I, I, I said to Ted, I said, I've seen enough to know that this isn't just a passing thing. You know, during that time, we probably visited about 30 different homes in the two weeks that we were here at Pentecost. And time and time again, we were bowled over by the love and generosity, the friendship. Um, and people genuinely said, um, you know, if there's anything I can do for you whilst you're here. And, you know, that's a kind of throwaway comment back in London. People say that, but no one ever means that. <laughs> but here people genuinely did. They would say, you know, I'm, I've just turned up to, to collect you, to take you somewhere. Out. Think, oh, wow. Or we're, we're putting on this event and we thought you might be interested. And amazing 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 um, and that happened time and time again and, and we've already alluded to the whatsapp messages those contacts keep on doing that I, the first time we arrived you know we come three of us from an airport all it needed was one car to come and pick us up um, to put our baggage in our baggage in and take us to wherever we needed to go but what do we have four different families turned up and i think Wow, what a welcome. And sorry, uh, who are we going back with? Okay, so why are the rest of you here? Well, we just wanted to come and welcome you. <laughs> <laughs> wow, thank you so much. We felt so welcome. That's amazing. Mm. Oh, beautiful, Mark, beautiful. I've been uh, blown away by the absolute deep-rooted love in this community of um, saints. My kids have had, I don't know how many invites to, for sleepovers. Uh, we've been checked in regularly by leadership on our well-being. Uh, we've been taken care of by our beautiful, loving hosts. Um, the other night, I was invited to a men's uh, social event. The guys were doing some bourbon tasting. It's very unique. I, it's not such a popular thing in South Africa. But I was just so amazed and encouraged in which manner that um, social event was conducted. It started off with an honest prayer by somebody there. 
and the responsible manner in which the guys went about with that, you know, and the talk just that I was just going on about what God is doing in their lives, how they want to get rid of sin in their lives and want to be going out all out for Jesus even more, or how they want to be better husbands. And that is honestly everywhere we go, you know, we go about even in these amazing huge malls you uh, walk into saints and that's all they can talk about is the love of God and uh, what Jesus did for them today and their families and everybody is smiling and full of love and joy so we're honestly so drawn in by this you know and so encouraged to go back home with a message of hope and love and and that Just, was a party that was after an event here that lasted to like after midnight right something like that i'm just saying men going around at that time of night talking about god is and and how they want to live a better life is off the charts i mean it's off the charts <laughs> praise god for the men of remnant praise god for the men of remnant so no keep going please whatever i'm just on that line it's amazing after every event, there's an after party. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to go home. We want to keep talking about what God is doing. Um, have fun and give him the glory in all of that. Beautiful. 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 And so consistent through all families, events, everywhere. Everything is focused up to God. And the children taking care of the children. I mean, all I'd have to say is, we have children coming over, could you please, I mean, like they were on, they're, these, these are young children that understand socially how to come in and welcome, you know, the, the ones from out of town in so that the children are all even closer than the adults and have more, I mean, that's been my experience. I mean, we're, we're very close, don't get me wrong, but this next generation down is even, more the 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 buy that tie the tie that binds is even stronger and and so Chris you're shaking was, your head yeah I was going to say we um, had some time Saturday to get, hear more about their testimonies and just a couple of sound bites so uh, Daniel their son uh, shared he it took him many weeks to make a, a friend you know back in Africa and uh, when he came here he had a like. A, 15 or so within minutes at the way down office, just coming up, taking them, getting them to joy things. Um, uh, I remember Femi just sharing the attention to detail and just giving, giving you honor for that. Like everything that we did this weekend, uh, so much thought put into to all of it, that, that it would be glorifying to God first, but then everyone's needs would be met. And, and I just, that was a sound bite. And the other, um, John shared a, a story about his, um, he shared a testimony as well, but his correlation to being a vet and how when he reads that medicine bottle, he has to trust that it's exactly what it says, that that medicine will put the animal to sleep for this long. If it wakes up, if the medicine's not right, if it's diluted at all, then, then it's life or death. And he said, I love that when I plug into this, I know it's not diluted, I know that it's life or death, and that I can follow it you know, to a T because there is, it's the accurate medicine. It's, there's no dilution. And I just, all these little stories that came out, uh, I left encouraged. I was blown away at getting to hear their testimonies and how they're hearing it and, and how they're applying it. So beautiful. We, I can't believe how much we did in one weekend, you know, <laughs> just seeing that video. That's beautiful. Candice, we've got so Life. many. I would just one little story, just a, the perseverance, um, especially in Africa. You know, Susan, when she first emailed in 2007, you know, Jessica Walters was over international and then she got busy. So I got the honor of doing it for a while. And then, of course, Chris now. But I remember, um, so back in 2007, you know, the internet wasn't great and it was spotty in Africa. And then, and she would go out before they had their property they would go out i think in the in the bush for x amount of months so she would email and she was like i love this and i'm doing way down and i'm just trying and you know haven't you know she she would you know she had told john but not so much the kids were young but she would go out and there was literally i don't even think they had electricity there was no internet nothing for that time so she would literally disappear you know off the face of the earth for several months and then all of a sudden she would pop back and then an email would come up, you know, I'm back, I'm back. 
and you know, back in town, I'm back, and then that happened for several years, and then, because you've always, there's always been large classes, English-speaking classes in South Africa, New Zealand, Australia, and then of course on all the army bases, you know, Heidelberg, Germany, we have, there's members in Japan, there's members, um, Italian-speaking members in Italy, there, you know, people are, and then sometimes if they're on an army base, you know, those in Japan may be moving to Italy, so you, you know, different, but, um, which she would pop back up. And then I remember at one point, I felt like she was growing weary. Like, I don't know, this is hard. I, I can't listen to the message. Cause I would say, do you know, you want to join? And she's like, I, it's, I can't, the messages will fall out, you know? And so anyway, she was a story, I feel like of perseverance of the only one in her country at that point that was, you know, and she stuck with it, even though she would be without, you know, internet, and she fought for this message. And I feel like, I, I mean, you could say that about every person in this room, you know, for sure. Um, but um, just with everybody going through the internationals, with the language barriers, with the time difference, you know, and the Anconas, and you ha actually encouraged us, you were always so strategic about when to call and, you know, call them this, because it's this time. And then when the Anconas were over there, it made it so much easier for us here to know how to, when to talk and how, you know, they just helped bridge all the, you know, all that logistical. And then of course the expense of coming over. And so I just feel like God has, um, I feel like this group, I mean, if this is what the church is being built on in all the nations, mm -hmm. I mean, that this is exciting, these personalities and, and, but I just feel like there's been such perseverance, you know, the underneath all of these smiling faces to establish something and, and, to, and to go out there. And I know Way Down obviously was very large, it was huge international. And so it's very exciting to see everything rise up. But so I know um, to come back, but be more, even more established. So I just wanna just, I've enjoyed just really so much just listening to everyone, but it is exciting for what God is doing and is exciting for the, the fight in these people that the, how badly they want God. And I know you can say about that with everybody in the States too, and that all the women, you know, had it, you know, were st stood strong and lived it. And then the men, the families came in. It's just, I think it's inspiring to all, everybody out there seeking. And just one other thing, there's been a person here locally that's been visiting for a very long time. And um, his parents are from Nigeria. And I think I was, and I, I, every time I see him, I'm like, What's, you know, I hope he joins. And so anyway, I saw him talking to Femi. And um, anyway, so I got a text today that he wants to join. So it's just true, you know. And so, praise God. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, what, what a night. And um, I want to thank, thank our guests and uh, their children, if they're around, can make their way to the stage as we close. But I would love for everybody, as we are closing um, the, the festival, uh, the Passover festival and uh, the Feast of Unleavened Bread and all the different things that we've been doing, it's been so beautiful, uh, to make sure that what we're doing is praying right now for uh, God to wake up the internet and make all of us to, uh, he's gonna grow it like he needs to grow it because one thing about it is um, the, What's really moving everyone has been that so, there's so many saints and the saints are taken care of. So I wanna thank all the saints that have helped and I wanna thank God for uh, what he's doing. And now may, in the name of Jesus Christ, may all of this, may the fruit fill the nations. Blessings on all of the countries. Just praise you, God, for all you've done for us. And so let's go out and live it and encourage, keep encouraging these people to battle on words. And I love you, children. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. Praise God. Thank you. You can overcome. Up in heaven, angels dance because they're free. Be sing for eternity Without God and His Son Jesus Everything is peaceful and lightness Happy always doing His will Happy always doing His will Overcome 
Angels up in heaven, angels dance cause they're free Happy sing for eternity, with our God and His Son Jesus Everything is peaceful and lightness, happy always doing His will Happy always doing His will, overcome